Hey, you. Think fast. Here comes the gold team, Sharice and Steven. Here comes the blue team, Susan and Ricky. They're here to play Think Fast, the game where fast minds and fast feet add up to fast prizes. And here's the host of Think Fast, Michael Carrington. Thank you, thank you very much, James. Hi, everyone, and welcome, Sharice and Stephen. And Susan and Ricky, how you doing? One Pat McDaniel, and welcome to the first episode of my little nostalgic game show review series. Sorry, nostalgic game show review series. We'll come for a better title. Let me know in the comments what title you want me to call this series, because I don't freaking know. So for this first episode, we're going to be taking a look at what I believe is the worst Think Fast episode to ever air. So similar to my Brain Treasure Review series, we're going to be ranking the games. So for Think Fast, how it's going to work, there's five games. And then there's a locker room, we'll rank those on scale 1 to 10. Maybe 1 to 5, I don't know. We'll get a final score at the end. We're going to have Michael here explain all the events. So the first event we have is Market Madness. If you see my worst games video, you'll know how I feel about this. I'll put a little uh, thing right here. If you want to see it. Our first event is called Market Mania. That's right. And as you can see, the stock boys at Johnson's Food Barrel have goofed up all the shelves. They've gotten everything wrong. They've mixed up the shelves over here. They put one item with another, and we have no idea what's going on. So what we have to do is first unscramble these aisle markers. They've even unscrambled these two. We have no idea what that says, so we have no idea what goes in its proper aisle. That's what you'll do first. You come all the way down here, unscramble the aisle markers, and then put everything else in its proper aisle. The first team to do that with no mistakes and buzz in here wins. Ready? Think fast. You know, so I said no mistakes. Uh, the issue with this game is this game is played four times. On this one, I think Melissa and Ricky. In two early episodes, uh, Carlton, Carlton, Nanita, and Alyssa and Heidi. Uh, the issue is every single time this game got played, there was freaking mis nobody actually won legit. It was all pity. Two episodes had the players misspelling the signs, and then there were two other. There are two episodes where they didn't put the, they missed an item, and ironically, the blue team won every single one of these out of pity. They never actually won legit. The gold team was off to a slow start. It took you a while to get these aisle markers down, but then you finally got it. Let's put them this way and see what he's got. First, they have Sir Fef Al. The thing fell off. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, uh, the E part of the uh, E fell off. So that's cereal, that's fruit, and snacks. And let's see what they have over that's here. Snacks. That's not snacks? Oh, that's S-N-C-A-K. That's gnicks. Oh, I'm sorry. The gold team buzzed in. That means the blue team wins. And as you can see, the blue team didn't even come close. They put Eclair. Uh, the next game we have is kind of a cool one. It's a memory game. It's called Sound on Sound. I am still recording, okay, I want to make sure. It's uh, called Sound on Sound. It's like a Simon-type game. Uh, this was only seen in two episodes. It was seen on this and Melissa and Ricky. So it's kind of interesting, I guess. 
Our next event is called Sound on Sound, and the object of this game is to remember the longest chain of sounds. Take a look at our sound makers. We have bongos, we have maracas, we have whistles and bells and potato chips that need to be crunched. The object is to start with a sound, and then your opponent has to make that same sound and then add a sound. And then they make those two sounds and add another sound. Whoever can remember the longest chain wins. Let's start with the blue team. Make the problem is that the other one is eight sounds. This one's only three, so three out of ten. The sound. Bongos. You forgot to add a sound. You had her going there. You had everyone down, but you forgot to add a sound. Take a look at it. Here's another clue. Okay, now we're going on to our next event. Another clue. Okay, she's got no idea right now, but the score is now blue leads with 100 gold. Okay, so I'd like to point this out. This is the only episode where all the, the letters are actually lowercase, because normally they're... You know, all uppercase, this is the only episode I've seen with this font. Now I get to the worst event, which is Plumber's Blackjack. And what makes this suck is both teams actually manage to tie. But they do the rule of, Oh, because the other team got a perfect first, they automatically win, you get screwed. Yeah, so I gotta give this an automatic 1 out of 10 because this event is pure bullshit. No, you know, I'll give it two extra points because the team it was actually close. The water laid out. Play like regular blackjack, except we play with beakers of water. We have ten beakers of water laid out on the table, and the object of this game is to fill this canister as high as you can go to the red line without going over, just like in blackjack. But which beaker you choose depends on the luck of the card. So pick a card, any card, high card goes first. And she's got a three. That's a three, and let's go over to the blue team, pick a card, any card, high card goes first. And she's got the six. That means blue team will go first with beaker number six. This one here, four down. Let's see if it goes over. I don't think so. So we're going to go back to gold. I'm going to pick you another card. Actually, I'm going to give you the three first. That's beaker number three. There you go. Pour that in. Okay, no one yet clear or near the line, so I'm going to go back. You want another card, Blue? She wants another card, and she gets a nine, which is beaker number nine. This big one here, oh, I don't know. Is that going to put her over? Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. It's awful close. See, see, it's really spilling out the edges, and they gave them the point on this and said it was fine. Awful close. Whoa, right on the line. So that was over. No, let's see if this will get her closer. As you can see, it's perfect hey. as well. on a team as well. So this should be a tie. But this one is slightly over. That means blue wins. This is bullshit. This game show is rigged. This has some commercials you want to see these real quick. Be candy. I've seen into the future. It is Dragon Warrior. Will you have the cunning, the concentration, the wisdom to puzzle your way to a world beyond imagination? We shall see, won't we? Dragon Warrior from Nintendo, coming soon. Some of the great prizes today's winners can bring home from a trip to the locker room. Have fun with your very own collection of a Carousel Skin Combo Gumball Machine Telephone, a Carousel Petite Gumball Machine Lap, and a full year supply of delicious gumballs. Shinsei's Radio Controlled Voyager comes equipped for a high adventure. Just switch on the two channel radio, crank up the high speed motor, and this beauty's ready to cruise up to 100 feet from shore from Shinsei. Need high resolution binoculars with multi coated optics for the. If you love your pizza top with green eggs and, uh, Green peppers and rocks, here's a Michael. Okay, so we have probably the only, like, good event in this episode, which is Pizza Party. This is kind of a unique one. Basically, you have to move the pizzas 
toppings to match up with the other ones. It's kind of interesting. I like it. All right, welcome back to Think Fast. The score is blue team with 150 gold, still waiting to get on. But now each event is worth $100. So it's anybody's game. Besides, the brain bitter hasn't been solved yet, and that's worth $200. But we're going to go on to our next event, and we're going to play this one with the guys. So girls, we'll see you at our next event. Bye-bye. Okay, we threw a pizza party, and no one showed up. So we stuck with a whole mess of peaches. Take a look at these peaches. I can't imagine why no one showed up. We had some ping pong pizza. We had some fly pizza. We had some money. So rock pizza left over from a rock concert and the old pepper pizza. Now the object of this game is to line up as many similar objects as you can. For instance, just spin them around until you line them up. The team that lines up the most before time runs out wins. You got the idea? Okay, then start spinning those pizzas and line them up. Okay, time is up. It is possible to get them all lined up, but let's see. Let's check the blue team first and let's see what's going on. We'll start over here. You got the, the flies lined up. You got the pe peppers lined up. You got another fly lined up. The egg lined up and the ping pong balls lined up. So, how many was that? They got five lined up over here on the blue team, and let's see what the gold has got. Let's see, where should I start? Let's start over here with her flies. She's got the flies. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> let's see, there are the flies, the rocks, the peppers, more rocks, peppers over here, Ping pong balls over here. And the money. And more ping pong balls. The gold team has got more lined up. Come over here, Stephen. I didn't mean to call you a girl there. I wasn't looking. Stephen is a real man. But we're going to go now to our brain mender. Remember, it's worth 200. So I gave out a seven. We're up to 14 now. So next we have this kind of unique one. It's called. Um, guess that voice. It's only in, it's only in this episode. It's okay, but the problem is that both teams fit copy off each other. Yeah, so I have to give this a five out of ten because they basically copied off each other. So Mark and Mendes has a free. Stone on Stone has a free. Blackjack on Mac Wheel one. Pizza party. This is kind of okay. I'd say six, maybe. It's a five, and then yeah, more. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get as bad as like a brain search episode, getting like a two. I think three might be our thing. Oh wait, Mark and managed to get like a freaking one because they just completely didn't do shit. Mark and Mendes gets a one. Sound Song gets a three. Black Jack gets a one. Pizza Party will give like a six. This one will give a five. Do you think you're good at recognizing people by the sound of their voice? Well, that's what we're going to do now. We have these people lined up from our audience, and the object of this game is to see how good you are at recognizing their voices. I'm going to interview them once, and then we're going to interview them again, and you'll have to match up the people to the voices. Okay, let's interview our first person. What is your name? Denise Rose. Denise, and what kind of stuff do you like to do? I like to hang out with my friends. Okay, that's Denise. And let's move on to our person number two. What is your name? Kristen Latterman. And where are you from? Glassburn, New Jersey. Okay, and speak up, you guys. They have to recognize your voices. And what's your name? Hesmer Savorvon. And what's, uh, what do you like to do? Play sports. Play sports, okay. I hope you remember, remember those names because we're now going to put our mysterious people behind the board. Go behind the board, Mr. Okay, and I guess we'll put these names up. Attention, because you're going to have to put one. Hello? Yes. Okay, number one is back there. What is your name? Cyborg 3. And what do you like to do? Eat space dust. Okay, that was Mysterian number one. Who? Mysterian number two, tell us your name. Zap Thoris. What was that, Mysterian number two? Zap Thoris. And what is your favorite flavor? Sneaker. Okay. Okay. That was number two, wasn't it? Okay, let's go on to Mysterian number three. Identify yourself. I am Bob number nine. And what did you have for breakfast? The usual giant toad eyeballs. 
Okay, everyone is get in the order your number so everyone can see. And Denise was number two. Correct on the gold. Correct on the blue. Money. Both teams get one hundred dollars. Oh, nobody got the brain bender either. I feel like I should do the brain bender. Is I'm gonna do a little bonus. So if someone gets the brain bender after event four, I'll give them one point. No, like they get it on the fifth event, they get one point. The fourth event, they'll get two. Third event, three. Second event, four. First event, five. You know, stuff like that. But if I don't get the brain bender, I might subtract a point. And if I get it during sun death, it's no bunch point. So, yeah. I'm still trying to figure this out. So, we have Mark and Madness is the one. Three points for sound on sound. One point for blackjack. Six points for pizza. Five for this. We're subtracting a point. They don't even bother getting it. Set it again. And remember, when you... Two hundred dollars. Okay, anyone got an idea what that is? Buzzing when you know what it is. Any guesses? Gold? No, no guesses? Left. Blue? Getting nervous? And let's take a look. One more. Let me see. The M... Hi, the Empire Strikes The Empire Strikes Back. More time. I'm going to tell you pie or what's that last one? Swing or strike? Strikes. strikes back. The Empire Strikes Back! The final score is blue team leads with 250, gold with 200. That means the blue team is going to the locker room. Was there not some of the two games that were actual skill based? The gold team actually won. And they didn't get it. Also, we had probably the worst locker room ever. It's a 1 out of 10. We have playing cards, a KB, and Simon's Quest. Okay, where are these prizes we're not going to win? A foosball table, a keyboard. South Florida's finest ocean foot and bow. So, this might be the worst locker room I think I've ever seen on the show. Locker number three. Oh my goodness, it's a headless man. That's the first match. So he only gets two. And doesn't find the time I'm getting there. Puts the 20 seconds, so. You know, whatever. That's okay. You'll have to find, Ricky. Ready? Let's put 30 seconds on the clock. Think fast. Where's that other headless man? He's off. It's not there. Keep going. Keep going until you find him. Keep going. Hit those buttons, Ricky. Hit him. Hit him. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him. He's still going. There is a match. Come on, guys. Close it up. Let's show him his next match. It's that guy there. Find another one like that. Find another guy like that. Where is that other monster? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Hit him. There's a match. Come on, Doc. Time is up. You got two matches all together, but you found the time bomb. Let's bring on Susan. Nobody Susan Goodman. I'm sorry, the time bomb went off. That means you only have 20 seconds. That's your first match right there. Okay, might think, okay, they only have 20 seconds. We can't win the grand prize. We might as well try, you know, let's try to get, you know, four or five prizes. You know, let's try our best. Unfortunately, speed is not this, uh, similar to her partner, speed is not this person's stride, uh, skill. Strong set, that's what it is. Speed isn't their strong set. I can't talk today, Jesus Christ. So she decides to go as slow as possible and nearly runs away from the freaking set to show how bad she is. Look, look at this crap. There are the shoes. Find those other shoes. Go! Where are those other shoes? Where are those other shoes? Take a look. Take a look. Keep going. Keep going. Find those shoes. Where are those? There they are. There's a match. Come on back. Hurry, hurry. Close it up. Close up. Close it. Close it. Hit the button. Match. You're not finished yet, Susan. Keep going. Find it. Oh, time is up. Time is up. How many matches all together? You got three matches. This is Michael Carrington saying, "We well, you don't have time to think twice. Think fast.
Yeah, she took so freaking long. She took so freaking long that they didn't even bother reading off the prizes. Like, if we add together the scores, including the minus one, that's 15 points on a possible 60, giving us a 2.5 out of 10. The only good parts of this episode are the pizza party event, which is kind of cool, and guess that voice, which is kind of eh, because I feel like both teams copied off each other. And here's the thing, like, I know sound on sound, like, the person forgot that's one thing, but, like, two of the blue team's wins were basically just pity. The pizza the gold team actually tried, and this one they kind of shit. So technically the gold team should have had... So technically the gold team should have had 300. You know, the gold, they both technically should have tied at 250. Wait, that wouldn't work. Oh yeah, they both technically should have tied at 250. Wait, what the hell were the final scores? Oh, 250 to... Yeah, they should have tied at 250 because of the blackjack. And then do sudden death for the locker room or something. Or, like, choose a winner or something. I don't know how to... Or do a six event or something. I don't know. This is the worst thing for this episode because it feels like... Most of it was due to pity. The games kind of sucked. Again, this is a pilot, so we'll see how well this turns out. Let me know in the comments which... Uh, what episode do you like me to review next of a Nick Game Show? And we might do it. Bye, guys.